the black youngster thing he got he got arrested for for, for being affiliated with what happened in charlotte do you care to comment on that at all <laughs> i ain't got nothing to do with it don't give a damn about it where you at where you at where you at where you at you see me now fit cuz where you at now where you at where you at we in Cash Stadium right now. We just left the store. Where you at right now, though? Thirty folks that got something to do with this is Juke, and God, it really ain't got nothing to do with this. But but Juke is his his brother. It's Juke. It's Juke. It's Migo. It's Youngster. When you talk about the events leading up to Young Dolph's tragic death, one name that keeps coming up is Black Youngsta. Throughout his career, Black Youngsta is probably best known for his notorious beef with Young Dolph. This wasn't just a minor feud either. It got real intense. Where you at? Where you at? Where you at? See what happened, bro? You see me? Down fit, cuz. Where you at, dog? Where you at? Where you at? We in Cash Day right now. We just left the store. Where you at right now, dog? And even after Dolph was murdered, Young Stud didn't back down. Instead, he kept the disrespect going, which shocked a lot of people. Black youngster has been receiving a little bit of backlash. Why well, is that? A lot of backlash. Why is that? Say. I wonder um, why. Because he uh, he performed his Young Dolph diss at one of his shows. Both Black Youngsta and Young Dolph hail from Memphis, but they took different paths in their careers. Black Youngsta signed with Yo Gotti's label, as well as Epic Records, while Young Dolph made a name for himself as an independent artist. Despite their different approaches, both found success in the rap game. But everything changed in November 2021, when Young Dolph was shot and killed in broad daylight. Around 1 p.m., the whole rap community was devastated when they heard the news, mourning the loss of a talent who was not just a great artist, but a beloved figure in the industry. So when Black Youngsta decided to diss Dolph after his death, it caught everyone off guard. Just a few days after Dolph was murdered, Youngsta performed his 2016 diss track Shake Some at Aces of Dallas Nightclub. People online were not having it. They felt it was incredibly disrespectful and way out of line, especially given the circumstances. But instead of apologizing or backing down, Youngsta doubled down on the beef. He released a new music video for his track, I'm Assuming, which he filmed in a graveyard. In the video, he rapped in front of a tombstone that read Thornton, a clear reference to Young Dolph's real last name. The move stirred up even more controversy and Black Youngsta faced a lot of backlash. People couldn't believe he'd go that far, especially right after Dolph's death. But Youngsta didn't seem to care. He took to Instagram to address the criticism, saying, I'm the type of N who ain't never sat back and looked for nobody to feel sorry for me. I come from the heart of South Memphis where you get no sympathy. Don't even know what that is. With that being said, I could give two FS what the world think about me. This attitude only added fuel to the fire, making people dislike him even more, especially since young Dolph was so well loved. But there's more to Black Youngsta's story than just his beef with Dolph. His life has been filled with wild, brutal experiences from dodging bullets as a child to losing his younger brothers, Black Youngsta's journey has been anything but easy. So, let's dive in deeper. Black Youngsta has opened up in several interviews about his tough upbringing and how he had to step up as a provider for his family from a very young age. Growing up, it was just him, his grandmother, and his three younger brothers all cramped together in a one-bedroom apartment. Life wasn't easy, but he did whatever he could to help out. Before he was running the streets, Black Youngsta actually got his start working at a local grocery store called Make Money Groceries, which was close to where he lived with his grandma. By the time he was just 10 years old, he was already hustling to support his family. He got creative with it too. In classic Memphis hustle fashion, Black Youngsta would have his cousin call the grocery store and place an order for food, knowing full well that no one would ever come to pick it up. At the end of the day when the food wasn't claimed, the store owners would let Youngsta take it home so he could feed his brothers. This clever little scheme worked for a while, but eventually the store shut down temporarily, and Black Youngsta had to figure out a new way to make ends meet. At just 12 years old, Black Youngsta found himself turning to the streets of South Memphis to survive. He started selling drugs, not just to random people in the neighborhood, but shockingly, even to some of his own family members. I was hitting crack cocaine, I was serving my aunties, I was serving my, my, my aunties, my 
the mamas. I was serving whoever. He said he tried to keep things clean by selling high quality drugs, so he wouldn't be responsible for hurting anyone with low grade stuff that could be even more dangerous. But over time, he realized there was an easier, albeit riskier, way to make money selling fake drugs to local hustlers. In an interview with Vlad TV, Youngsta admitted that he once made $90,000 selling what are known as fast bricks, which are fake drugs sold as the real deal. I'm just getting deep into this shit. So the worst thing I probably went through is sitting a nigga two, three bricks, making 90, getting 90,000 out of nigga something real fast back then because it was, it was just a little cheaper. He would pocket the cash and then disappear before anyone figured out they'd been tricked. This dangerous game worked for a while, but as they say, Memphis might be a small city and the streets are even smaller. It wasn't long before he sold fake drugs to the wrong person, and they were ready to take revenge. Not long after, Black Youngsta found himself on the receiving end of some street justice. While he was out on the block, he was caught in a drive-by shooting. He got hit three times, twice in the legs and once in the arm. He didn't even have his weapon on him at the time. To this day, he claims he has no idea who shot him, saying he had so many enemies back then that it could have been anyone. But instead of laying low and letting things cool off, Black Youngsta wanted payback. He wanted his enemies to feel the same pain he felt when he got shot. But as the saying goes, if you go looking for trouble, it's going to find you. Just weeks after Youngsta was shot, tragedy struck again, this time hitting even closer to home. His youngest brother, Ronnie Benson, was K-worded in November 2013. Ronnie died on the same streets of Memphis where Black Youngsta had made a name for himself. Youngsta was devastated. He explained in an interview that losing Ronnie didn't make any sense to him because Ronnie wasn't involved in street life. Out of all four brothers, Ronnie was the one who stayed out of trouble, the one who did everything right. Didn't want to be a part of the streets. I, I kept him in school, bought him, bought him new cars and shit. I just kept him in school, kept him out the way so he can focus on school. And I was, you know, he, he, somebody ain't not kidding him. The loss of his brother pushed Black Youngsta into a dark place. He felt lost, angry, and hopeless. For a while, he even gave up on his dreams of becoming a rapper. He threw himself deeper into the street life, getting involved in everything from robbery to dealing drugs. Occasionally, he'd still record music, but his heart wasn't in it anymore. That all changed during one recording session when he laid down a track called Heavy. This song blew up in the Memphis streets, and suddenly Black Youngsta had a buzz. The track was so hot that it caught the attention of Yo Gotti, one of Memphis's biggest rap stars. Gotti decided to jump on the remix and took Youngsta under his wing, even bringing him on tour. Things were finally starting to look up for Black Youngsta. Not only did he become a new signee at Yo Gotti's CMG label, but Gotti also gifted him a brand new red Lamborghini. Gotti even revealed the car to him during a performance at a club. When they walked out into the parking lot, there it was, a shiny new Lamborghini waiting for him. A few months after dropping his hit song Heavy, Black Youngsta was living the high life, flying around on a private jet. It was on one of these flights that he officially signed with CMG, which now stands for Creative Music Group, but back in the day was just known as Coke Music Group. They never disclosed how much his deal was worth, but as soon as he signed, Youngsta made sure everyone knew he was getting to the money. He flooded social media with videos of himself tossing around stacks of cash, showing off his wild personality on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, where millions of people were tuning in to watch him every week. After signing with CMG, Black Youngsta released his debut mixtape titled I Swear to God on September 24th, 2015. This mixtape put him on the map, and he quickly started planning his next project. By 2016, he was already gearing up for his follow-up mixtape and was making a lot of money performing at local clubs, especially on the Chitlin Circuit, which is a network of venues that have historically catered to black artists in the South. But it was during a stop in Atlanta that Black Youngsta had his first major viral moment and it wasn't because of a song. This time, it was all about cash, specifically too much cash. According to reports, Youngsta went to a Wells Fargo bank in Atlanta and withdrew $200,000 in cash. The police were waiting for him right outside, and word on the street is that the bank teller tipped them off. Put me on the ground, put, put in my head, you know, like, so I'm like, what I do? And then later, like, I was supposed to have 2000 on me, 200000 on me. So I'm like, 
I'm a millionaire. Like, how can I not have 200000 on me? Despite the run-in with the cops, Black Youngsta was riding high on his fame. Not long after, he dropped another mixtape called Young and Reckless. The lead track on that tape was Shake Some, a direct diss track aimed at Young Dolph. Now, this wasn't some random beef that came out of nowhere. There was a lot of history and tension behind it, especially involving Yo Gotti and his brother Big Jook, who was like a mentor to Black Youngsta. Here's the backstory. Young Dolph was known around Memphis as a serious trap boy, moving weight all over the city. At one point, he was even supplying drugs to Big Jook, Yo Gotti's brother. This was a huge deal because Dolph was much younger than Jook, but was already playing a major role in the drug game. Their relationship went south once Dolph started making a name for himself in the music industry. After dropping his mixtape series, High Class Street Music and American Gangster, Dolph's career began to take off, especially after his memorable appearance on Sway in the Morning's TV show. That interview was a big moment for Dolph. He talked about why he turned down certain record deals, revealing that several labels and big-name artists like Gucci Mane and 2 Chainz had reached out to him. When Yo Gotti's name came up, Dolph made it clear that he preferred to blaze his own trail rather than ride on someone else's coattails. Only thing was going to happen behind it was people like, oh, he popped off because of Gotti. You yeah. feel what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Which I can't do that because I got too much of my own time and money. Mm -hmm. At that time, Yo Gotti and Young Dolph weren't exactly on good terms, and Gotti had been sneak dissing Dolph on a few occasions. Tired of all the backhanded comments, Dolph finally clapped back. He didn't directly name Yo Gotti, but he called him out for going from being his number one fan to his biggest hater. Everyone in the industry knew exactly who he was talking about. Then, on February 18th, 2016, young Dolph announced he was releasing his debut album titled King of Memphis. This was a strategic move since Yo Gotti had already crowned himself the King of Memphis, years before Dolph even entered the rap game. Even though Yo Gotti didn't make a public statement about the album title, you can bet it caused a lot of chatter, especially in Memphis. By the next month, Black Youngsta decided to jump into the beef with Young Dolph. Some people thought he was just being loyal to CMG and Yo Gotti, who had changed his life and given him a shot. But others saw it as Youngsta's way to stir up some drama, gain more fame, and sell records. Unlike Yo Gotti, who had been taking a more subtle approach with his disses, Black Youngsta came out swinging. He didn't hold back, boldly saying he was going to slap Young Dolph. Dolph, you a bitch. You a soft ass nigga. You nice ass nigga. If you got a problem, nigga, say you got a problem. Shake ass. When Young Dolph saw Black Youngsta's video threatening him, he didn't take it too seriously at first. He responded with just a couple of emojis, a laughing face and a thumbs down, as if to say he wasn't bothered. But Black Youngsta wasn't playing games. He pulled up to Young Dolph's neighborhood in Castellon, loaded up with all kinds of weapons looking for Dolph. The crazy part, these two guys were practically neighbors, from the exact same section of Memphis, just a quick 5-10 to 10 minute drive apart. It was like a ticking time bomb in the same neighborhood. As soon as the video of Youngsta went viral, Dolph took to Instagram to call out both Black Youngsta and Yo Gotti, accusing them of playing police games. He was basically saying they were trying to get him in trouble with the law, instead of handling things in the streets. Ho got to use a I just got back to the city. They say you trying to put charges on me and put the police on me. You send your little do all your talking. Talk for yourself. Damn. A few weeks later, Yo Gotti got pulled into the drama during an interview when he was asked about the escalating beef between Youngsta and Dolph. Gotti played it cool, saying, Little homie's on the team, so I'm always going to give him the proper advice, whether it's from a big brother or a big homie standpoint. He went on to add, My advice, you know, I don't move like that. I'm always going to tell you, whether it's him or any younger guy, not to handle your business like that. Gotti was basically saying he wasn't down with how Youngsta was handling things, but he was still going to support his guy. Meanwhile, the beef was heating up in the studio too. Black Youngsta dropped his diss track Shake Some, going straight at Dolph, calling him out by name. Dolph wasn't about to let that slide. Around the same time, he released his own diss track on the Ready Remix, which featured Big Bank Black, Young Dolph, and Young Thug. But Dolph didn't stop there. He cranked up the heat with one of the hardest diss tracks of the era, Play What Yo Be. In the music video, he even went as far as using lookalikes for Yo Gotti and his big brother Big Juk, making it clear who he was targeting. Yo Gotti, trying to take the high road, responded with a series of subliminal tweets. But things took a serious turn just two weeks after Dolph dropped his diss track in video. During CIA weekend in Charlotte, young Dolph was ambushed, and over a hundred shots were fired at his SUV. Miraculously, Dolph was unharmed, thanks to the bulletproof SUV he was in. But this wasn't just some random attack. 
it had black youngsta's fingerprints all over it, at least according to rumors. The getaway van used in the shooting was allegedly rented by black youngsta himself. However, youngsta managed to dodge the charges. It turned out that the rental van had been reported stolen before the shooting and youngsta had a solid alibi placing him in Durham, North Carolina, which is hours away from Charlotte, for a performance at the time of the attack. TMZ later reported that the district attorney found no witnesses who could identify youngsta, nor was there any solid evidence linking him to the shooting. With the case falling apart, Youngsta decided to capitalize on the publicity and announced he was dropping new music. In June 2017, he released a mixtape aptly titled I'm Innocent. During the promo run, he admitted on multiple platforms that he had tried to squash the beef with Dolph, hinting that maybe it was time to focus on making money and leaving the street drama behind. But just when it seemed like things might calm down, life hit Black Youngsta hard again. They say when it rains, it pours, and for Youngsta, that couldn't have been true. Brewer. After spending a fortune on legal fees to beat the shooting case, he was struck with another personal tragedy. This time, his second brother, Tedrick Benson, also known as TD Heavy Camp in the music world, was killed. TD lost his life at an apartment complex in Lauderhill, Florida. The incident had nothing to do with the ongoing beef with Young Dolph or anything related to Black Youngsta. It was just another heartbreaking loss in a string of tough breaks for the Memphis rapper. The trouble didn't end there for Black Youngsta. During a performance in Charleston, South Carolina, things took a wild turn when a concert goer decided to test his crew's gangster. Not one to back down, Youngsta quickly pulled out a Draco and fired a warning shot in the air. Despite the chaos, he kept his composure, finished his set, and then dared his enemies to meet him outside to settle things once and for all. Unsurprisingly, they didn't take him up on the offer. The whole incident quickly went viral, especially since it came not long after Youngsta had managed to beat the case involving Young Dolph. With all the attention he was getting, it wasn't long before law enforcement took notice. Not too much later, Youngsta found himself in trouble with the law again, getting arrested in both Dallas and Houston on weapons charges. When the media asked Young Dolph about Youngsta's arrests, Dolph just brushed it off saying he didn't care. Uh, the Black Youngsta thing, he got, he got arrested for, for, for being affiliated with what happened in Charlotte. You had care to comment on that at all? <laughs> I ain't got nothing to do with it, don't give a damn about it. Not one to let things slide, Black Youngsta fired back on Instagram taking a jab at Dolph but ended up contradicting himself. He posted a video of himself firing shots into the air with the caption, I'm with my gang, go get your shooter shot. It was clear he was still looking for a fight, but tragedy struck not too long after. In November 2021, Young Dolph was K-worded in a planned hit in South Memphis. The news shocked the rap community and left a void in Memphis's music scene. Just a month after Dolph's death, Black Youngsta released a music video shot in a cemetery, filled with subliminal disses aimed at Dolph. To make things even more controversial, he performed his diss track Shake Some, which had already gained notoriety for its harsh lyrics against Dolph during a club performance in Dallas. The timing and disrespectful nature of the performance didn't sit well with many fans and people in the club who found it incredibly tasteless given that Dolph had just been murdered. Some people even speculated that Black Youngsta might have had something to do with Dolph's death, but those rumors were quickly put to rest when the actual suspects were caught just weeks after the shooting. Even though Youngsta was cleared of any involvement, the speculation and bad blood didn't do his reputation any favors. Then, as if things couldn't get worse for Youngsta, he faced another heartbreaking loss the following year. His last remaining brother was tragically K-worded at a South Memphis gas station. The younger brother got into an argument with someone, and as he tried to walk away, he was shot in the back of the head. The shooter didn't stop there. He also fired at the people in the car with Youngsta's brother. The news of losing his final brother spread quickly on social media, and Youngsta posted about it the same day, clearly devastated by the loss. He was wanted on second-degree murder charges for the shooting in August of Tamanuel Benson, the brother of Memphis rapper Black Youngsta. Despite the string of tragedies, Youngsta tried to keep his career going. From August to the end of 2023, he was on the CMG Artist Tour, which brought him a lot of attention though not always the positive kind. Many people felt he was mocking young Dolph throughout his performances, which only added to the ongoing drama and tension. As 2024 began, another blow hit the CMG camp. 
Big Juk, Yo Gotti's brother and a significant figure in CMG, was shot and K-worded at a funeral service in East Memphis. The shooting happened right outside the service, just as people were leaving. At least five police sources have confirmed with Fox 13 that the person killed is Anthony Mims, also known as Big Jook. Now, Big Jook is the brother of rapper Yo Gotti. Govan asked for Young Dolph to be murdered. Mr. Govan has been indicted and is in custody for being involved in the Young Dolph. This event sparked a lot of debate, with some saying it was a retaliation hit for Young Dolph's death, while others believed it was due to an unrelated, long-standing Memphis beef. As for Black Youngsta, he's still making music, but his reputation has taken a serious hit. Many people in the industry and fans alike have lost respect for him, and it seems like his past actions are coming back to haunt him. While he's still out there trying to stay relevant, it's clear that many don't rate him like they used to.